Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there lived a man so exceptional that the divine hosts of heaven and hell were forced to take note. A man dangerous enough to bring Satan to his knees, but selfless enough to make God himself raise an eyebrow. How did this come to pass? Well, it all began at a very special birthday party for a very special young lady. Surprise! What is all this? It's your birthday, Kenzie. So? You've never been to a birthday party? No. Oh, like not even growing up? I went to the School of the Americas since kindergarten. We didn't really do birthday parties. But you celebrated Christmas? I don't have to explain myself to you. Oh, Kinsey, this is going to be so much fun. Zinjai made a cake. Jane Austen is here. We'll play some games. What sort of games? <laughs> so you celebrate birthdays by trafficking with spirits? It's spooky and fun. It's a bunch of letters. It's tradition. Every slumber party has to involve a spirit board. Slumber party? How's it work? We ask it a question, and the spirit of the board will reveal the answer. How? Yeah, someone pushes the pointy thing to wherever they want. Wait, wait, wait. Can we go back to you and your slumber parties? No time. All right. Everyone put their hands on the cursor. Cursor? I feel the magic already. All right. Will the president slash god emperor for life ever choose a partner to reign alongside them? No. Ooh, someone's getting married. Shut up, Matt. Who will tame the president's wild heart? <laughs> what are you guys trying to spell? I'm not moving it. That's the spirit, Kinsey. I'm serious. I'm not moving it either. Neither am I. Jezebel? Who the fuck is... <laughs> Is that not normal? Where'd you get the board? I was going through Zinyak's artifact collection and found it there. Who did it belong to? Alistair Crowley? Oh, Christ. Um, guys, I think it's laughing at us. Fuck this. I think you're a smart enough piece of wood to see where this is going. Now, are you ready to cooperate? That's more like it. You think we can trust it? It's not like we got a lot of options. So what's the plan? We mount up and go in after the boss? No, I do. No sense in what's left of humanity walking right into a death trap. Someone's gotta live to tell the story. That's a stupid plan, Johnny. I'm leaving you in charge. Hell of a plan, Johnny. Are you serious? I'm coming too. Are you kidding me? How do you plan to come back? Yeah, I try not to sweat the details. You need someone with you that does. No. It's my birthday. Fine. All right, then. You know where my friend is? True to its word, the spirit board opened up another portal and sent Johnny and Kinsey screaming into hell. Altor's behind this, I know it. Altor and the Saints haven't been enemies in years. You really think he's responsible? You don't know him like I do. The boss put him through a window for a reason. The reason was the boss was kind of fucking crazy back then. That's a fair point. You know how much easier this would be if we just found a car? You know how much easier this would be if you just gave me a second? How are we gonna find the Eltor building? Biggest building down here, giant altar sign on it. I don't think this is a problem. I'll buy that. Look at us. Kinsey Kensington and Johnny Gat driving together on a birthday adventure. Are you always this excited? Generally, I'm a misanthrope. I get it.
this is hell. Not as bad as I thought. It kind of reminds me of Steelport. So, what's the plan? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna shoot him in the face unless he gives us the boss back. What if Dean doesn't have the boss? I'll probably still shoot him in the face. Welcome to hell. Shouldn't you have a receptionist? Such is the plight of eternal damnation. But I have a feeling you didn't come here to catch up. Let's talk in my office. Not even death could stop the enterprising Vogel, who wasted no time in setting up an altar branch in the bowels of hell. Dane was eager to fill Johnny in on the ever-shifting politics of land rights in the underworld. But real estate mattered little to Johnny, who only cared where his friend was. Where'd you put the president? I've been trying to explain that I didn't take them. Bullshit. You expect me to believe you just happen to be the first thing we see in hell? Maybe it's just me, but your thank you sounds more like an accusation. That's probably because he plans to kill you. Okay. I get the trust issues. Can I show you something? The pieces all came together. The president had caused more chaos and destruction than any other in human history. It was only natural that Satan would want them to marry his daughter. They needed a plan. And Johnny had one. I'm gonna shoot the devil in the face. I think you might be skipping some details. No, I said in the face. I like the commitment, but you gotta find a way to get close enough to him in the first place. When's the wedding? I'll just show up and... and then you'll shoot him in the face. Sorry, but it's a little more complicated than that. These things are tied to the soul. You won't be able to enter without one. So how do we get one? You get his attention. I know some places that are of particular value to the father of the bride. You hit those, you'll get your shot. Wait, why would Satan give out an invitation for destroying his stuff? Oh, he won't, but it should piss him off enough to get him to attack Johnny personally. Either the devil kills Gat and Ultor gets the construction contracts to rebuild what was destroyed, or Johnny kills Satan and I'll have to pay less taxes. It's pretty win-win. That's why you're helping us? To make more money in hell? Hell's what you make of it, sweetie. Works for me. What you got? All right. Satan had entrusted the day-to-day -day running of hell to five archdukes, and Dane knew how to find them all. But beyond that, not everyone in hell was content to go along with Satan's status quo. There were others who shared Dane's ambition for power, and the Altor mogul knew that the key to unseating Satan lie in gaining their aid. But before Johnny set out to wage war against the Prince of Darkness, Dane had one final gift. An artifact that he had spent fortunes on. Lucifer's Cracked Halo. This holy relic granted Johnny the majestic wings of the Morning Star. However, he still needed help in learning how to use them. Here's the deal. If you want some face time with Satan, you need to get his attention. Now, Satan hates being challenged, so anything you do to undermine his control is good. Fraud, mayhem, shooting demons in the face, anything. You can keep track of Satan's wrath with this handy meter. Get it high enough and you'll be having drinks with Big Red in no time. I've compiled a list of shit to do, so take a look and do whatever sounds fun. Oh, one more thing. We have some potential allies down here, trust me. You want to impress them. Abandon! 
abandoned ship. We've been boarded. <laughs> Damn things off my ship! It's easier every time. I got a bit of treasure in that chest over there. The weapon you find inside may help with our little imp problem. Summon these imps to serve as my crew. I forgot what a handful they could be. Once aboard, they wouldn't listen to their captain. They ran amok in the bowers of the ship. Hey, it's okay to drop the pirate voice. What pirate voice would that be? Wow. Zinyak's destruction of Earth had a profound impact on the afterlife. To heaven, it was a logistical nightmare. Saint Peter's meticulous nature drove purgatory wait times to unbearable levels. Meanwhile, in hell, where souls in pain were used as currency, it created a new era of prosperity for the wickedly enterprising. This economic boom resulted in the coffers of hell to be overflowing, which in turn piqued the interest of the most notorious man that sailed the Seven Seas. Long had Blackbeard been a thorn in Satan's side, robbing tax collectors on a semi-regular basis. But the promise of an immeasurable fortune drove him to be even bolder. An arrangement was reached. Blackbeard would provide information on strategic targets in exchange for a share of the profit. Johnny, who was interested in murder, not money, happily agreed. I grant ye the ability to summon my crew whenever they're needed. I raided a Centerpol office and found information on where the President is being kept. Evidently, they've been trapped in some sort of soul crystal inside Satan's palace. Breaking in is an impossibility. The best bet to save them is to continue to try to draw Satan out of his palace. Lights up. William Shakespeare, humanity's greatest playwright, and hell's most diabolical purveyor of entertainment, looks on as a brave mortal on an Orphean quest enters. The bard's interest is piqued, and he looks to test his visitor's mettle. The masked tragedies were used to enemies cowering as they approached, but soon they realized that they faced a foe with courage and nobility, traits uncommon in the fires of perdition. The inciting incident resolved. The time had come for rising action. The battle raged on below, and as bullets and blood flew, the bard arched a curious eyebrow. Could this mortal be the exact thing that Shakespeare needed? Conflict resolved. Shakespeare eagerly awaited meeting the champion that dispatched so many of his men. Undoubtedly, they were here for the Bard's aid. 
And while happy endings were not a thing found in hell, Shakespeare always had a soft spot for comedies. In the land of the living, William Shakespeare is regarded as one of the most prolific playwrights of all time. However, to the denizens of hell, the bard is seen in a far different light. After selling his soul for fame and adoration, Shakespeare served in hell as Satan's spy master general. In doing his duty, Shakespeare would punish the souls he was investigating by forcing them to perform in grotesque passion plays for Satan's amusement. But in a Twelfth Night-esque twist, Shakespeare found himself living a double life. While he projected an image of cruelty, his heart was as soft as Jezebel's. In secret, he would tutor her on the classics and act out the works of his mortal days. When Satan found out, he cast Shakespeare out of the palace, believing that the poet would be tormented by the populace of hell, far out of Jezebel's sight. But Satan had not counted on the bard's cunning. Embracing his persona of master torturer, Shakespeare and his followers, the tragedies, took root in the entertainment district, biding their time for revenge. And so Shakespeare called forth the deus ex machina to bestow our protagonist with the arcane power of force storm. I'm not into Shakespeare's whole creepy mask thing. Reminds me too much of that sex party I went to. 